Welcome to the Advanced Supplement to Family Leisure's Pool School. What we're going to talk about in this part of the pool school is a little bit more detail on what is alkalinity. How does it work? Why does it impact pH so much? We'll talk about what is pH and why that's so important. And we're going to talk about chlorine, what it really is, how it really works, and why so many things impact its effectiveness. So let's start at the beginning, and that's alkalinity. First of all, as I mentioned in the basic pool school, alkalinity is a measure of the alkali ions in the water. Now, alkali ions are basically salt ions with a positive charge. So, for example, low alkalinity, you would have three alkali ions in the water. That's very few alkali ions. However, if you have three plus ions, three negatively charged ions, the minuses and the positives balance. So your pH is neutral. So pH is balanced. Where the problem comes in with low alkalinity is let's say it rains and you get some pollution in the water that has a positive charge. Well now instead of having three alkali ions, you have six. If you still only have three negative ions, your pH is very, very wrong. It's wrong by 50% because now it's six to three. Okay, so then you're going to add some negative ions to the water called pH minus. So you add some negative ions to the water, and let's say you put in nine. Well, now the, the pH is very, very negative, again, by about 35% because you've got six pluses and nine negatives. You can see that by adding and adding and adding and adding, the pH is going to be bouncing all over the place because there just isn't enough ions in the water to make it stable. That's what happens with low alkalinity. That's why it's so important to get your alkalinity up if it's too low. The alternative is, what if there's lots and lots of alkalinities in the water? Lots of pluses, lots, and it's balanced with lots and lots of negatives. So now the alkalinity is very high, it's balanced with negatives, but the pH is wrong because there's slightly more pluses or slightly more negatives. Well now, to impact the plus or the minus to get the pH neutral, you have to add tons and tons of pluses to balance out all those negatives, or tons and tons of negatives to balance out all those pluses. So what's happening is the pH tends to get locked in place if you have a lot of alkalinity and a lot of negative ions. It takes a lot of work to adjust your pH. That's why it's so important that you have a good amount of alkali ions, and in this case we'll represent that as 12, and a good amount of negative ions, we'll represent that as 12, and your pH is neutral. Now you can add some pH plus or pH minus without significantly impacting the alkalinity and without messing with the pH. So alkalinity is a measure of how many alkali ions are in the water, but the reason it's so important is so that it's easy to keep your pH in balance. So as we talked about in the basic pool school, pH is very important because if the pH is wrong, the chemicals turn into gases. They break down and become ineffective. And also if the pH is wrong, the eyes get red and irritated. Your children's eyes will be irritated by swimming. So the pH, as we discussed in basic pool school, has to be adjusted with pH plus or pH minus. Now let's talk a little bit more of why, about why the chlorine does not work if the pH is wrong. First of all, I want you to remember that chlorine in its natural state is a gas. So chlorine combines with something, they put it in the water, it works, but when it breaks down, it turns into a gas, it goes away. So when your pH is wrong, that chlorine model becomes very unstable, it breaks down, it turns into a gas. And so you're adding chlorine to the water but it's not doing anything, it's simply going away. Now, we talked about, in the basic pool school, we talked about evaporation, turning molecules into gas. Hydrogen and oxygen form water when they turn into gas. They've, the evaporation occurs, well, same thing happens with chlorine. If it turns into a gas, it simply goes away and you're wasting money on chlorine. Not to mention, as we talked about in the basic pool school, it impacts the children's eyes. So now let's talk about chlorine. What is it and how does it work? Well, first of all, chlorine in its natural state is a gas 
and it's a negatively charged ion, Cl minus. And chlorine loves to combine with things. In particular, chlorine loves to combine with metals, metals like sodium. So you have a chemical called NaCl. Na is sodium plus Cl is chlorine negative. Sodium chloride. Well, we call that table salt. And as I talked about in basic pool school, when, table, when chlorine combines with sodium, it forms a, a basically a stable salt and it's neutral. It's not affecting anything. It's not killing anything. Well, chlorine also likes to combine with something called amino acids. Now, amino acids are the basic building block for proteins. So when chlorine combines with an amino acid, it's called a chloramine. So why is that important? And we'll call that a chloramine. It's chlorine combined with an amino acid. Well, the reason that's so important is our bodies are great big combinations of proteins, which means we're a collection of amino acids. So let me give you an example. If you take some liquid chlorine, pour it on your hand and leave it sit there for a little while. Now this is very strong chlorine. And you leave it sit there for a little while and all of a sudden you say, well, that burns. See, it go like that, you throw it down, you, you look at it and you can see a mark on your skin where the chlorine was. Well, you know what that was, was that was the chlorine stripping amino acids out of your skin. Well, in this case, it comes a little uncomfortable. You dip your hand in a little water, you can make it feel a little better. But that's the way chlorine works. It strips amino acids out of whatever it is it's attacking when it forms a chloramine. Well, for you and I, that just means we get a little dry skin, a little irritation, or something like that. But if you're a small, single-cell animal, like a bacteria, if you lose some amino acids, you die. If you're a virus and you lose some amino acids, you die. If you're a small plant like algae and you lose some amino acids, it kills it. So what's happening, the way chlorine kills is it strips amino acids off of whatever it is attacking. Then the chlorine combined with the amino acids becomes a chloramine and it's very, very stable. That's why shock is so important. Shock is a very, very powerful, any of the shocks are very powerful oxidizing agents. What an oxidizing agent does is it strips away the bonds between the chlorine and the amino acids. It just strips that bond away. And that frees the chlorine up to be reactivated. That's why shocking is so important. It doesn't add chlorine. If you use a potassium monopersulfate shock, it doesn't add chlorine to the water. But what it does do is it keeps reactivating the chlorine. Now it's important to remember, just when you shock the pool doesn't mean your chlorine level is going to go up. It is simply taking the chlorine and making it reactive. Now there are shocks that add chlorine, but we don't recommend those as we talked about in basic pool school. So as a refresher, alkalinity, very, very important because it affects pH. pH, very, very important because it affects chlorine. And chlorine, we know we have to keep enough chlorine in the water to kill anything that's in the water by stripping out those amino acids and the way we keep it active is by shocking the pool. 